Welcome to Freed on Business. He grew up in South Florida, has been in business here since the early 90s, and has closed over $3 billion in deals. He's seen it all. He always has an opinion, and he's always ready to share it. Informed, entertaining, and connected, he has his finger on the pulse of South Florida's business community. He's Jim Freed, and this is Freed on Business. Hey, everybody. I'd like to welcome everybody to Freed on Business, especially our listeners on our new feed on Clubhouse. That's right. We're on Clubhouse, Twitch, everywhere you want to find us, we'll be there. Thanks to Reagan Mendoza for figuring out all the technical stuff. We've got Dr. Darren Hayes to talk to us about cybersecurity. I got hacked over the weekend by somebody who fished me, so we'll talk about that. It was a message that said, hey, I didn't know you did that. Can you think of anything else scarier to get than that from a guy who's a um, um, a investigative reporter? Not even kidding. Oh, shook me to the bottom of my core. Olivia Ramos, our, our uh, on-program artificial intelligence expert, will tell me how I need to have artificial intelligence inserted so I don't do that anymore. Andre, it's only like the fourth time. I mean, I've had the IRS thing, the whole bit. And then we have, of course, Andre Sunny today being the co-pilot uh, working it up today. So, Andre, tell us a little bit more about, more about Darren. So, could not be more excited to be back with my good friend Darren Hayes, leading expert in the field of digital forensics and in always my cybersecurity guru. Uh, Darren was nice enough to help me when I went through a similar situation just a few years ago. And it's destabilizing. So to be here to help everyone raise awareness and learn, it's just a great opportunity. So, yep, we're going to be right back after our message from Warren Henry. And then we're going to talk to Darren because Andres is right. You feel personally violated. More about violation personally after this. Wow, that's a great piece, huh? running business talk show we've been on for 13 years nobody's even close nobody's had the thousands of guests the great people that we've had i want to thank our sponsors at warren henry for being with us for the last eight years thank you larry thank you warren thank you eric and thank you um samantha now remember when you're looking to buy or lease a car you want to get every advantage that you can that's why you have to check out warren henry land rover range rover infinity and jaguar up in gainesville they sell audi down in the keys they sell them all and in broward they sell lamborghini what do they all have in common? Well, all great cars, they all come with the Warren Henry Advantage. Not the Lamborghini. Oop, that's a five head there. The uh, Warren Henry Advantage is not on the Lamborghinis, but it's on everything else. That's right. You get a complimentary service loaner, dynamic wheel protection, key replacement, guaranteed purchase offer, best value guarantee in a 72-hour exchange. You take three days to make sure you like a Warren Henry car, you will. Join me, my mom, and my beautiful wife, Vivian, and lots of my friends. We're all members of the Warren Henry family. You should be, too. Always the best service, always the best price, always Warren Henry. because I can be kind too. That's right. I can be kind to you when I tell you what to do with your real estate deal. I've got families that call me for advice. I've got investors, developers. I've even got a friend of mine who's got an enormous listing for a famous developer, just can't get any traction, just needs my help. I'm going to tell him what's wrong. He may not like it, but not up to me. Give me a call at 305-773-6300 if I can help you capitalize your deals. We're doing enormous transactions Bridge loans, construction loans, mezzanine financing, as much as it seems counterintuitive, the real estate market on the commercial end is white hot. Give me a call at 305-773-6300Y because when you call me, it is always all about you. Welcome back to Freedom Business. Connect with us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at Jim Freed or at Freedom Business and on Instagram at Jim Freed One. Now, back to your host, Jim Freed. 
Hey, everybody, don't adjust your screen. I sat on my glasses. The new ones will be here probably next week. I'll look really cool, kind of like Brewster Keller, really thick and black. It's really cool. They look really great. And they got those photo. I don't know. I got them at Warby Parker. Oops. Anyway, they're going to be great. Remember, we're going to talk today about cybersecurity. I've been fished, harpooned, um, to have my ID stolen, the IRS, the whole bit. If they can do it, they've done it. So we've got our good friend Darren Hayes. He was here last time. Andreas got hacked. His world got shattered. So we're going to talk today about different things you can do. And I mean, my God, it comes right at you, doctor. Darren, I swear, I got one thing is on Instagram Messenger. Another thing tells you watch the football games, click here, and that costs you $1,000 before you can get off their thing. These are apps. These aren't even... These aren't even like fishing things. So there's all kinds of crazy things right here on my phone that causes a problem. Can you tell me how to avoid all that? Sure. Uh, great to, to be on the show again. Thanks so much for inviting me, Jim, and, and great to see everybody here. Uh, so there are quite a few things that uh, you can do. So first of all, you've got to think about privacy and security are inextricably linked. So try to put the least amount of information out there as you can. Don't put, try not to put pictures of your kids on social media. Um, when you upload photographs, make sure you don't have your location services on because it's very easy to make out your location uh, from location services. That's part of the metadata in your photo. And be aware of information that's out there online about you. So, you know, there's websites like Have I Been Pawned? And that's P W. ND. And so have I been pawned can enter your email address and it will tell you all the breaches that you have been a part of. So I think it's important for everybody to realize that all of our information is out there. It's being compromised. It's how you manage that risk going forward. That's really, really important. Um, putting a credit freeze on each of with the three reporting credit agencies can be helpful. And then just Unlock those each time you need to open up an account or somebody needs to do an inquiry that you have allowed somebody to do. So there are things that you can do yourself without actually having to, to pay a credit monitoring service. I know a lot of these services will often try to sell you, you, you know, how to monitor your information on the dark web. But the fact of the matter is that your information is on the clear web out there and it's available for free. Yeah, you know, I recently had somebody that was talking to me about having a DNA test. And I said, well, do you want to have the DNA test to find something out or you just want to spray your DNA all over the universe? I mean, those DNA tests scare me. Absolutely, because you're giving up a lot of your personal rights when you do those DNA tests. We've seen so many breaches occur. What's to stop one of these breaches happening with a, a DNA company? And we don't know ultimately whether this information will be sold overseas, for, for example, to China or to Russia. And it's just more personal information that people can use against you and maybe find out, you know, maybe disorders that you have or that kind of thing. And uh, more inf personal information that a hacker has, the easier it is to social engineer. In it, in well, I got to believe that the Chinese would want it because they would want to have the DNA profiles of different people that are of interest to them. Absolutely, absolutely. And they actually recently instituted a law whereby they it's illegal for companies in China to export any kind of DNA information, something for us to consider doing. Now, Olivia, is there a way to use artificial intelligence to protect ourselves or to learn more about what we have on the web? Yes, um, absolutely. I mean, it's not security is not my expertise. I am using artificial intelligence for real estate. So I have actually more questions for Darren than I have answers. And my question would be, how do you think the technology of blockchain will be used um, towards security? I know blockchain has had a few security breaches that have been pretty major and lost. there's a lot of money lost there, but how do you see that technology coming into security? Sure, so I, I, I think that, you know, more and more we're seeing cybersecurity threats through our supply chain. So you've probably heard about Solar Winds and some other companies, uh, managed service providers, which provide cloud uh, computing for, for many different companies. 
And so once people get into the supply chain, then it's even more difficult to protect ourselves. I can tell you that there are state-sponsored uh, cybersecurity companies out there providing services to U.S. companies that are putting us in danger. You know, one of the things, you know, I'm starting a hemp farm. One of the most important valuable assets is the seeds. Uh, we have, it's very difficult to get. It's and when people watch who's buying them, they see what's going on and they try to infer things from that. So we accumulate our seeds slowly over time. But the real thing that I have is that today, some guy asked me if I'd like to use his blockchain technology to do seed to stem, uh, seed to store tracking. So I didn't realize that it's already been broken. And so if they can break the blockchain, that means that the information really isn't that secure and it's really not the greatest place to have your your uh, financial information stored just yet. I, I would say that, that the whole concept behind blockchain is kind of tracking everything through the supply chain that ends up you know, on your computer. And, and that's a really important concept because we have, for example, a lot of mobile developers who take online libraries and use them in their development. And some of these libraries do contain malware or code that's been written overseas. And so we need to think more and more the same way that we've been dealing with uh, nuclear weapons. So every part that goes into a nuclear weapon is RFID tracked. And so that we can see if there are any um, products that are counterfeit going into a nuclear weapon. And we need to think about that in terms of cybersecurity and the operating systems that we use, the applications that we use, um, because we need to make sure that those are home produced and trustworthy. Now, Andreas, you you run a data base thing where people are integrated and they come together and stuff like that. So I gotta believe there's a lot of different places where data can bleed out or somebody can come in are you working with Dr. Hayes to help protect your customers? Absolutely. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing. So as a data aggregator, as a, a connector, a middleware for technologies and a dashboard where we're populating multiple systems into a single place, there's always risks, inherent risks, even user risks. So working with Darren to help educate our users to make sure that they're up to date on what, when and where, what they should be doing or shouldn't be doing, you know, case in point, don't go on TikTok, which Darren can speak to in a minute for a oh, lot of wow. reasons. Um, and password, you know, best practices, uh, a risk assessment. What is the chance of it happening? What can I do when it happens? How to prevent it from being a real problem? Well, what so, I'd like to do is I'd like to take a quick break and then I'd like you to ask those questions directly to Dr. Hayes with a little bit of a supplement for whatever Olivia has been writing down over there. And, um, you know, because this is way out of my universe. Uh, all I know is to just not let anybody in and not to click on stuff. And still these guys and gals and people, they can still attract me. They know how to do it. First, it was getting you with sugar. Now they're getting you with fear. We'll talk a little bit more about that after this. Reminding everybody, we're South Florida's longest running business talk show. My goodness, we got to be closing in on the national thing there. Who else has been on longer than me? Lou Dobbs? He was off the air. Anyway, and I want to thank our friends at Warren Henry. I don't even want to compare myself to Lou Dobbs. Ooh. <laughs> um, we've been on the, sh on the show for 13 years. Our sponsor, Warren Henry, has been on with us since 2012. We want to thank them so much. God bless them. I want to thank uh, Warren, Eric. Uh, Larry, and of course, our contact over there, Samantha Jacobson. Remember, whenever you're looking to buy or lease a car, you want to get every advantage that you can. That's why you have to jail. Warren Henry Lander of Range Rover Infinity and Jaguar. Up in Gainesville, they sell Audi. Down in the Keys, they sell them all. What do they all have in common? Well, they all come with, uh, they're all great cars, and they all come with the Warren Henry Advantage. What's the Warren Henry Advantage? The Warren Henry Advantage is a suite of great services that you get when you buy your car. It comes with the basic one, complimentary loaner service. Then you can get dynamic wheel protection key replacement, guaranteed purchase offer, best value guarantee, and my favorite, the 72-hour exchange. You get three days to decide whether you like your car. Guess what? You will. 
Join me, my mom, my beautiful, lovely, loving wife, Vivian, and a lot of my friends, more all the time. We're all members of the Horton Henry family. You should be too. Always the best service, always the best price. You got it. Always Warren Henry. Becca Carlson from Carlson Integrated. You know, a lot of our clients find that they can do anything, but not really everything. We are always excited to jump in and help. So whether you need another set of hands for a project or even comprehensive marketing management, our team of marketing mavens would love to have a conversation with you to see if we are the right fit. We do everything from logo and design work to email outreach and social media to writing and thought leadership. And here's a fun one. We are now offering our fabulous ebook of top 10 marketing tips on our website for free. So head over to carlsonintegrated.com and grab a copy today. And please always let us know how we can help. My email is Becca, that's B-E-K-A-H at carlsonintegrated.com. That's B-E-K-A-H at carlsonintegrated.com. Wow. It's always uh, got to take a breath after she rolls through there. Hi, I'm Jim Freed, and I do real estate transactions. Give me a call. I'm helping a number of my high net worth friends. Actually, what I'm doing is I'm helping their kids buy their first homes. It's really kind of fun. You know, the parents and then the kids, and now the kids are buying their first homes. Of course, the parents are co-signing. Uh, the parents do not have uh, W-2 income. So guess what they need? They need our help. They call me and Ed, and we get it done. That's right. Also doing a number of development partners that I have on different deals. They also don't have W-2 income. They're calling me going, Jim, interest rates are rising. Help! And I go, okay, no problem. We get them loans too. On the commercial side, I'm doing all kinds of great bridge loans, construction loans, mezzanine loans, uh, partnership equity loans, uh, fix and flip loans, horizontal residential loans. You name it. I know the guys are, and ladies that are doing it. That's right, Olivia. Guys and ladies, I said that. That's right. I know the people. That's I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I know the people that you need to call to get it done. And guess what? I'm one of them, and we got a bunch of them on the show today. So call me. The one thing I do is I do do I do the due diligence for my friends so they can just make the call and I can solve the problem. Give me the call. 305-773-6300. Why call me? Because when you call me, it's always all about you. Welcome back to Freedom Business. Connect with us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at Jim Freed or at Freedom Business and on Instagram at Jim Freed One. Now, back to your host, Jim Freed. Hey, everybody. We're back. We're back with my cybersecurity experts. We talked about how you feel violated when it happens. I know that. I've had my IRS uh, tax thing stolen. So is my mom. I've had my IDs, my ID swipe a number of times. Even though my niece is in charge, I've had my credit card skim. That was before she was in charge. Um, then uh, what else have I had done? I got I got harpooned over the weekend by some schmuck who said, I saw you. I saw what you did, scared the crap out of me with these cell phones. I don't know what I did. Ran red light. I don't know. Didn't do anything. It was BS. So you got to use your head and watch out. Flipping to Andreas. How did it happen to you? So, uh, a few years ago, the bad actor compromised my personal account email and then started to re restrict my access to my own services. We were able to identify them there, shut down, and take into effect an action plan that eventually removed them, but not before it cost $40,000 in damages in devices that could never be used, in uh, in mobile devices that were forever compromised, their IMEI numbers exposed, and Darren can speak to this. It was destabilizing as an understatement. I couldn't get into my bank account because the bank wanted to send me a text. Dude, text I couldn't get you on the phone for 10 days. You were out of your mind. I was out of my mind. You were locked and, down. You yeah. were offline. You were, as we say technically, screwed. Yeah. Well, luckily, my team took over and I you know, spent 10 days in the Stone Ages, which is fine. Read some newspapers. Uh, luckily, <laughs> we were... <laughs> we uh, we recovered well. We're better for it, we're, and we're smarter for now working with Darren and others 
But really, to Darren and to the industry, let's go back to the basics from before the break. The phone, you know, how can we do better with our phone? What happens with this phone today? You know, with our apps, with our day to day. You know, of course, we've got to talk about TikTok. What can I do right now to clean up my phone and make it safer? How about well, let's that? talk apps? Start with apps. What are wrong with apps today? Which apps, Darren? He's going to tell you. You're Any- talking. Or- let him talk. Well, well, there's lots of there's lots of different apps. I mean, one of the things that that sometimes isn't explained enough is the types of permissions associated with mobile apps. And so, with TikTok, apart from the fact that we need to be concerned with China and facial recognition, which they use far more extensively than than we do. I mean, to to jump on a train in China, you need to be facially recognized. Uh, it's used to, to enter your own apartment. So they're using this, you know, and it is a threat to us. But I think what's even more important about this type of app is the fact that it has these permissions that will allow TikTok and their developers, ByteDance, uh, to inject malware if they want. Uh, if you connect your phone to your computer, it has the ability to modify files on your computer. And so we need to think more about these apps, who's behind these apps, and what permissions are behind these apps. We also need to think Just about- Just remove TikTok. Yes. <laughs> and I don't know whether you saw about a, a day ago, uh, TikTok agreed to pay $92 million for privacy violations. And so- but somebody you know, the, vibrated in front of their phone and they didn't like it when they got on TikTok? <laughs> yeah, so pretty some pretty bad things that have happened. But we've seen this even with, with other apps that we think that are safe, like Uber, for example. So um, Uber was, was found to be tracking individuals even after they had uninstalled the app. And so it's just very difficult for the average consumer to know what to do. I would say limit your permissions, uh, information sharing with any apps. Don't connect, you know, you get that message with your iPhone, uh, connect to Bluetooth devices around you or limit as many permissions as you can. That's the bottom line. I see Olivia sort of uh, scratching her head there, but really what's going on is it's like steam coming out of her head there. You know, Olivia worked for DARPA, so you better watch yourself there, Darren. (laughs) Olivia, what's on your mind there? I'm just wondering, um, Darren, if the problem is that all our information is scattered and and therefore we don't really have control or we lose track of how we're using it. To a, all my info point. used to be in my wallet. Now it's right. So if, <laughs> is there a solution in your mind? Uh, it's, you know, something that might not exist, but uh, something that could trigger some ideas for entrepreneurs out there. Um, where all the information could be in a single place where you can control what goes out and, and, and you know, oh, when you geez. use it. Is that something that's possible? Is that something that exists today or is that something that needs to be worked on? So, so I, I think that, um, you know, a lot of the big companies, the data brokers, they, they have wield a lot of power on Capitol Hill and make sure that, you know, privacy legislation hasn't been introduced at, a federal level. And so a lot of states have adopted their own uh, privacy legislation, like California, like New York, and some other states. And so they're taking the initiative. I mean, in the European Union, with the General Data Protection Act uh, regulation, people have more control over their data. They c- they are not opted in by default uh, to data collection. And so that's everybody's afraid of the government and what's the NSA doing. But the fact of the matter is it, it's big data brokers, big companies that are collecting all of our personal information, and it's the Wild West. You can buy and sell that information without restriction pretty much. Wow, that's horrible. Now, Andreas, so you got broken into, they cost you $40,000 in equipment, time, energy, well, time and energy, more than that. What was the lasting effect? What did you do? going forward without revealing secretive best practices that you pay Darren for. But, um, you know, that's because people have to call Darren and hire him to learn that. But, um, you know, what things do you do now that you do differently? Did you do, what is, what's different? Well, so at that time I was hyper-focused on my business security as I was operating and I stopped focusing on my personal security. You know, I didn't think about my iCloud at that time, that my iCloud account was in my name. That email was also on websites. 
because I registered for things with the same email. I didn't properly isolate myself personally in ways to protect myself like I had in my business. And once they got into one, it became a daisy chain. They used one to get to the next, to get to the next. And it's like a, a dam breaking when some a bad actors really coming after you. So what I do, the lasting effect is this. If my phone stutters, if, I, if it gets staticky, it doesn't load right. I freak out a little, then I calm down. But <laughs> the taking steps every day to do better, to disconnect things, taking a path of least exposure. So limit everything. To only use or turn on what you what you need when you need it. Okay, Darren, um, is there a basic service that you could do for somebody for a fixed price that gives them analysis? Number one, and number two, I get this thing. Trend Microsystems wants to protect all of my machines. You know, what's all that about? Is it is it really going to be able to protect my cell phone if I put it on there? Is it going to grind it to a halt? Yeah, I, I think that we, you know, I, I don't actually like the word cyber and cybersecurity because, as Andreas said, it's it's a lot more than that. It's it's big picture, and so where where company security meets personal security, you know, you have employees who will say, you know, I'm going to add something to Google Drive. I'll work on it from home, you know, instead of having to use a VPN to get into work, and suddenly somebody compromises that Google Docs account or that cloud account. And then you're in trouble. And so we've got to really think about everything like that in a holistic manner. So, um, you know, with regard to corporate corporations, for example, with the pandemic, uh, I can tell you that in New York City, um, commercial burglary is up, right? But a lot of companies, instead of just emailing their employees, you know, work just work from home, we're still shut, uh, they put it on their website, you know, our building is closed and, and that kind of thing. And so it's it's really important to to think about those kinds of things that you put out there on your corporate website that allow people to gain more information and visibility about what your operations are. Let me give you another example, Darren. One of my friends, um, recently got he's a friend who works in the cannabis business so he gets paid with a cashier's check ah uh, you already know what i'm going to talk about right organized crime is going across america stealing all these checks they're going through your mail right now and before you even know it it's already been processed and that cashier's check read between the lines what happens to your friend yep. he's going to go ask the treasury department to find the money it's already been found in a checks and account oh yeah oh yeah so this sort of happens. Is this going up, Darren? Yeah, it, it's it's a big problem. Commercial burglary and and just so many people who who put that information out there. You know, there's there's other problems as well. There's a great DEF CON presentation, and so that brings up another point. It's really helpful to see what some of these hackers are doing to maybe attend some of these hacker conferences. All these DEF CON presentations are on YouTube for free. You don't even have to go to the conference in person. But there was one great presentation where he talked about these keys that people use to enter businesses that like the fire department, if you're not there and it's 3 a.m. Right. in the morning, and how it's easy to make one of these keys, you know? Well, buy one. You go to the guy at the fire department, you go, your master key, how much? 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, sold. Exactly. I have a key to everybody. So it's not just technical. It's it's the social engineering. It's physical security. Everybody at the company is responsible for security. And that's that's the main message. Wow. We should have uh, Reagan uh, Marek on, too, the guy that does the uh, condo security. we got to get you back, Darren. I think we're having another double dip here, Andreas. We're going to be right back with more jaw-dropping stuff from Dr. A's right after this. I'm rocking it, but I'm also here on South Florida's longest running business talk show. Thank you to our friends at Warren Henry for being our sponsors since 2012. We want to always thank Eric, Larry, um, Warren, and of course, Samantha. Hey, everybody, when you're looking to buy or lease a car, you want to get every advantage that you can. That's why you have to check out Warren Henry 
Land Rover, Range Rover, Infinity, and Jaguar up in Gainesville. I'm pointing north. They sell Audis down in the Keys. That's south. They sell everything. What do they all have in common? Well, they're all great cars, and they call, all come with a Warren Henry advantage. I really want to get one of those great smoking Jeeps they sell down there in the Keys. You know, what is Warren Henry advantage? Well, that's all these great things that they do when you buy your car. First of all, you get May Stark to be your service rep. She's tremendous up at the 151st and Biscayne New Store. They give you a complimentary service loan or dynamic wheel protection, key replacement, guaranteed purchase offer, best value guarantee, and you get the 72-hour exchange, which means you can change your car out for three days. Guess what? Nobody does it because they love their car. My mom, my wife, my friends, we're all members of Warren Henry family. You should be too. Go up on our YouTube channel and watch us interview them. They're just tremendous people. Oh, and I'm going to go to Supercar Saturday soon, too, for the first time in a year. Always the best price. Always the best service. Always Warren Henry. It's really important to be kind. My rabbi gave me this for Pat for uh, Purim. Kindness is contagious. I grew the flowers because I'm a farmer. It's really important to be kind. So call me. Let's do some business together. Because believe it or not, I'm kind of nice. Yes, I can be tough and hard if I need to be to get the deal done. We all know that real estate deals don't happen until there's brinksmanship involved. What does that mean? You got to get up and walk away. When you're done, you need to send somebody back over to say, hey, we want to do the deal. Who's the best at that? Me. I usually get it done in one phone call. Just ask the guys up in Palm Beach County. They wanted a bridge loan. I said, no, you need a co-developer. I brought them the guy that did the deal next door. They're in love. How about that? One phone call. So if you got an issue in real estate and you need some advice and some help, give me a call. 305-773-6300. Uh-oh, I just put my number out on the internet. Dr. Hayes is going to beat up my you-know-what for that. But call me, email me. I'm everywhere. I'm going to have to hire Dr. Hayes to put up a bunch of walls so the cyber bad guys can't get me again. But give me a call. Why? Because when you call me, it's always all about you. Welcome back to Freedom Business. Connect with us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at Jim Freed or at Freed on Business and on Instagram at Jim Freed One. Now, back to your host, Jim Freed. All right, the show's working. I just got a business call. Had to put it on. Call me back later. But yeah, it happens all the time. We're here now with some of my favorite people. Sorry, Andreas. Olivia comes first. Then there's Andreas. Dr. Hayes, he just protects my you-know-what. And of course, Reagan Mendoza not saying anything, but running the whole thing. Welcome back to the show. Olivia is my AI expert. She's also one of the smartest people I know. She's been writing it down. So I know she's got another one for you, Dr. Hayes. Olivia, rock it. Okay, so this might be a weird question, but if you can paint a picture, and I'm sure part of being an expert in securities is understanding the worst case scenarios. If you can paint a picture of a dystopia, like a dystopia where none of this, we have no solutions and every all the data is completely available and it just you know becomes a free for all. What can we expect in a world like that? Living in it. <laughs> yeah, I think we're God, probably this we're isn't probably dystopia really? universe. Look at oh, you, the Make it even worse. Like what where How does it get escalate? worse? Haven't you seen those TV? No, I, I feel like as we have problems, there are solutions and things kind of balance what, itself what out. About that. <laughs> well, I would say I would say uh we're pretty close to that, I, I think, because, you know, we've had a, had a situation with uh, black energy malware distributed by the Russians in a, in a cyber attack against Ukraine, took out the electrical grid for 700,000 people. And the worst case scenario is that, you know, malware takes out the signaling system and New York subway system. And so we've seen... Oh, it takes out NORAD and goes and does a launch. Sure, sure. That's so, what I'm worried about. 
Absolutely. We're, we're, we're at a, a point where we're not even worried about the millions that are being lost, but the integrity of the infrastructure. So the New York Stock Exchange, if we lose confidence in that or the banking system, that's a lot worse than losing 100 million. So that, that really is the worst case scenario. That's going to happen. Look, you know that that's on the table for the Chinese and the Russians. They already tried with the virus. I'm not going to spout any any conspiracy theories. We can all go look up our favorite one. But the thing is morphing a little bit, isn't it? So the reality is, is that we've already been subjected to the dystopian universe. And I go, oh, I'm going to do politics for one second. Olivia, all you got to do is drive past a bus stop right after it rains and look at the disheartened people. For all of the people that feel like there wasn't any kind of disruption and they're just being vaccine tourists in Miami, there are people whose lives have been destroyed that will never recover from this. And that's what they're after. And they hack our stuff. They hack our stuff and nobody says anything. They're already everywhere from that uh, thing they just did. I forgot what it's called. Sonic Boom or something. Yeah, it's I just thinking right there, another bad scenario already happened with uh with Merck and the ransomware attack that cost them one point three billion dollars. It, it delayed production of medications, it delayed research. Uh just getting back to one of the things that you mentioned, Jim, about uh your phone number and putting your phone number out there. Uh one security tip is get a free Google Voice number. And Google Voice will ring on your cell phone, but it'll be a completely different number. And then use for your bank your actual number for people to contact. So that that it's just a lot better. It kind of screens your real number, your underlying number, and and you know good security practice. Let me say something about that. When I was running for city commissioner, we caught my opponent trying to phone bomb me. They sent me from an auto dialer like hundreds and hundreds of calls. Only a handful got through because we were using Google. Yes. That's what stopped it. High five to Grant Stern for that. He gets one of those. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, let me ask you something. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to push this. Olivia, this come on. Be yourself. <laughs> okay. So you're, what you're saying is, uh, and it's already happened. So in the U.S., we can have an infrastructure attack where we can lose basic uh, like power, uh, internet, um access to our banks everything can be completely shut off that's what you're saying at including any including the safety systems at turkey point nuclear reactor so so we've had we've had a couple of days that and i could tell you the exact date where uh there was a technical glitch on the new york stock exchange uh an airline had to had to cancel all flights because of a computer glitch and so we've had all these glitches occur on the same day are they really just coincidental? <laughs> so, so things like that happen. Um, you know, that are a big warning to what could happen in in the future. But it all starts with one person, right? Somebody at that company, at that airline, clicked on the wrong link about what they did over the weekend, just like sure. Jim, and then Daisy Chain up through that infrastructure. Through I that saw computer. what you did over the weekend. I can't believe you did that. Click here to see the video. Boom! The whole company's dead. Yeah. Or click on my <laughs> click on these cute kittens. Anything, you know, just don't click on things. This is, you know, rule number one. Yeah, but that's impossible because they they they. I'll tell you another one. You're home. You're really late at night. Really late at night. You're dead tired, and you get an email from what it looks like it's your bank, and it says your thing has been compromised. Call to confirm right now. Boom, you're dead. Well, if if I was not guilty, guilty, guilty. If you receive well, something that, that, I'm, I'm that elicits a visceral reaction like that, deep breath, just like when my phone stutters, take a deep breath and just take a beat and, and before I act. You want to act on information. You can't react. And if you're being forced to react, pause and go, why did I feel this way? Is wow, this legitimate? You're such a mature person. How many years of therapy have you had? <laughs> uh, just yeah. that one vicious hack was enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I can tell you that a lot of these cyber attacks happen around the holidays. So around 4th of July, fewer people in the office, people going away from the weekend. You know, the computer runs a little slow on that Friday afternoon or whatever, or around Thanksgiving. That's a big one as well. So on the Wednesday or the Friday around Thanksgiving, that's when a lot of co uh, companies get hacked. And 
Nobody wants to report anything as they're leaving the office just before the holiday. God, that's tremendous. Wow, Olivia, what's next? I have another one. Yes, yep. okay, so <laughs> in terms of I our basic her. necessities, water, light, uh, you know, just the basics that right now is an outdated infrastructure. It's in, in, in some cities more than a hundred years old. Um, things that we need to survive. Yes, we need, a, a, you know, the stock market needs to be secure and all these things, but just basic survival that some countries don't actually have. So, but in the U.S. we do. Would it help to have a fragmented or local infrastructure as a replacement where, let's say, for example, buildings collect solar energy, they collect water, and they have uh, some kind of safety net for when these infrastructure collapse may happen. <laughs> or, is there, or is there a conversation out there for these basic needs to be less uh, susceptible to, to hacks? Yeah, I, I think we've learned a lot from, from lessons in the past, like Hurricane Sandy, which hit the Northeast, and, and how we had to change laws uh, related to that. But, but in particular, um, the, the hurricane that hit New, New Orleans uh, was really, really bad and made us rethink really about disaster recovery planning, because that whole recovery plan uh, relied on on cell service and relied on people being able to communicate with one another. And, you know, once your telecommunication systems go down, it's a whole different story, lots of different planning. The Sony hack, which basically reduced people to pen and paper because all of those computers were destroyed. What do you do if you have no computers or you have no, no telecommunications? And that's really the disaster recovery plans that companies should be thinking about. Now, how about this? And then we'll go for a break. How about this? All the, uh, you know, all the cars that have the little monitors in them from the uh, from the uh, auto insurance. Now they're still good. Now they're going to your cell phone. But still, all those cars are plugged into the web. They all have some kind of transmitting thing that they do every month. My car goes. Would you like to transmit extra data? And of course, I hit no way. Yeah, I, I mean, there, there was uh, an, an interesting article a, a couple of years ago about, about OnStar. And so they were talking about how when you've stopped paying for your service, you're still being tracked. <laughs> it's unbelievable. They sell everything they possibly can. There's somebody, I got to just say it this way, smarter than Olivia figuring out how to make money on my data. We're going to talk. We're going to go for a quick break. Then we're going to finish up here our talk about data breaches in the dark universe and the dark arts that you need to avoid with our master of the dark arts, Darren Hayes. Stick with us. Reagan, rock it. everybody we're south florida's longest running talk show and i'm also reminding olivia how much we need her on the show because she's the smartest person i know asks all these great questions it's true it's true you are it's true we're south florida's longest running business talk show because i say so it's also true i want to thank our friends at warren henry automotive this is my lucky read it's, it's i've been doing it using the same piece of paper since 2012. you know what it says i'll tell you it says when you're looking to buy or lease a car you want to get every advantage that you can. That's why you have to check out Warren Henry. Land Rover, Range Rover, Infiniti and Jaguar, up in Gainesville, they sell Audi. Down in the Keys, they sell them all. I've actually added that. I've had the copy so long. What do you all have in common? Well, they all have, they're all great cars and they all come with a Warren Henry advantage. That means you get complimentary um, service. I almost forgot. I was going to do the old ad. It's hilarious. Dynamic wheel protection, key replacement, guaranteed purchase offer. I did the other list for years. Best value guarantee in the 72-hour exchange. You can take three days to like your car. You will. My friends, my wife, my mom, we're all members of the Warren Henry family. You should be too. Always the best service. Always the best price. Always Warren Henry.
Hey, this is Becca Carlson from Carlson Integrated. You know, a lot of our clients find that they can do anything, but not really everything. We are always excited to jump in and help. So whether you need another set of hands for a project or even comprehensive marketing management, our team of marketing mavens would love to have a conversation with you to see if we are the right fit. We do everything from logo and design work to email outreach and social media to writing and thought leadership. And here's a fun one. We are now offering our fabulous ebook of top 10 marketing tips on our website for free. So head over to carlsonintegrated.com and grab a copy today. And please always let us know how we can help. My email is Becca, that's B-E-K-A-H at carlsonintegrated.com. That's B-E-K-A-H at carlsonintegrated.com. You know, I'm sitting here thinking of some great... Um, what is it? Uh, survey polls, polls that I want to run. Here's one. Is it time to wear a collar on Zoom? You know what another good one is? Is it time to cut your hair yet? I don't know. I don't know. I'm liking this long hair thing. Let me tell you something else. Give me a call. Because if you call me, it's always all about you. I do all kinds of things with realists. Oh my gosh, we lost we lost the doctor. What happened? Sure, doctor. Otherwise, I'm going to have Olivia run the whole show. <laughs> anyway, call me 305 773 6300. Show you I could just handle anything. The guy just dropped off the show, but he'll be back. I can do whatever we need <laughs> in real estate. Give me a call. You need residential? I'm doing great residential loans for some of my clients and their kids. I'm helping a bunch of kids buy their first home. Kids, my gosh, they're 30, 31 years old. Um, I'm helping other people refinance their homes and pull out cash. I've got a couple of developers doing that to pull cash out before the rates really go up. And I'm doing all kinds of bridge loans, construction loans, regular commercial capital markets are back in their booming. So call me at 305-773-6300-Y because when you call me, it is always all about you. Welcome back to Freedom Business. Connect with us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at Jim Freed or at Freedom Business and on Instagram at Jim Freed One. Now, back to your host, Jim Freed. That's me. Somebody's, uh, oh, Olivia, your boss is talking. Is that your boss talking, Olivia? Uh huh, I caught that. Yeah, you didn't get it quite muted. So we don't care. This is all about kindness. We don't care. Put that back on and let your little puppy talk. We don't mind. You know, I've been doing the show long, so long, my neck used to look like that. Now it looks like that. We're going to talk to, I'm actually going to have a, a doctor on that's going to show me how to get rid of that and make it look like that. We're going to do that in a few weeks. Well, you got to look good, right? Okay, so Darren hasn't called back. Olivia, ask your question in any way. What's your question? I remember we did a, 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 a lot of courses at Singularity University on, on, on cybersecurity. It was one of the, oh, great. He's back. He's back, <laughs> he's back and he's better than ever. Somebody good, hacked good. him. Darren, I'm sorry you were hacked. All right. I have a question for you, as I'm sure, sure. you're not surprised. Um, we haven't touched on this subject, and I think it's really important because it affects everybody. And this was something that we went over at Singularity University. Um, and it was about Wi-Fi and the security of oh. Wi-Fi. And for example, I remember being told, and this was in 2016, so that's why I'm asking this question. Um, if you get on Wi-Fi in the airport, for example, essentially all your information can from your computer can be taken as opposed to a secure Wi-Fi in your house. So what's the difference between a public Wi-Fi versus a personal personal Wi-Fi and how people should be concerned when connecting at Starbucks or connecting at a co-working space. Oh. And sorry, Great Jim, question. I'll stop there. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, not, much <clears throat> not much difference, actually. Uh, so I, I would actually say that both are unsecure. The protocols that we use today uh, have, have both been hacked. And so the, the only difference is that people aren't closer to your connection, but um, it's not that difficult for somebody to jump onto your connection. The difference is that somebody uh, who's by your house, for example, um, the best thing to do is to make your SSID or the name of your access point not visible. So that's one of the things that you can do. But you can also make the password for your router a lot more complicated than you might find at a public Wi-Fi access point, and so that's a lot better as well. So that's really the, 
there's not a whole lot of difference in terms of security, just the proximity of people around you and how much easier it is for somebody to, uh, you know, access your information if they're closer to you. How about the concept of a VPN? VPNs are a lot more secure for you to use. Uh, definitely, you know, advise any company that they, they should have their employees use that to gain access to their network. But nothing's truly secure. People still can can compromise your computer. How about Proton and um, what's the other one? Uh, you know Proton what the other one is. Yeah. How about those things that everybody signal, signal and Proton? All the things uh, that people tell me is so safe. Secure sure. messaging. Yeah, <laughs> he's cracking up. Yeah, so so those tools are actually safer, um, like Telegram, for example. But you know, again. The, the Juroff brothers are, are the ones who developed Telegram. Um, they have also developed the equivalent of uh, Facebook in Russia, the Russian Facebook. And so you kind of wonder how close they are. Um, but Signal, you know, Signal is definitely a good app to use in terms of security when talking to people, sharing files. So there are some really good apps out there that you should, should consider. Um, there's also another service called Halo and Halo Privacy. So any of these services that do actual end-to-end -end encryption, a lot of companies say that they do it, but they don't really do it. Andreas, I'm going to let you ask the next question, the last question. Rock it on. So don't. what I heard was don't use Wi-Fi if you can help it. Have a VPN provided by your company, if possible, in every instance. What about sharing with your family? Shared things with personal and business. Now that we're all working from home, do I need a separate Wi-Fi, a separate internet connection at home? What do I do? What's my best foot forward from here? Sure, sure. I, I think that you know one of the problems is that we do have our kids, you know, shoulder surfing, getting our passwords and uh, and being able to access our information. And that's a bad thing because, you know, um, you know, I canceled my Netflix service and, and and within 10 minutes, my kids were watching Netflix again because on your, on your I've <laughs> got the, the access. Right. So so we got to think about that, that, you know, the kids that that are using our services, are we using different passwords for those services? So the Wi-Fi connection, I'm not so concerned about because even if you have a second Wi-Fi connection, you're still uh, going to be, you know, a little bit more compromised. Try and use an Ethernet connection to your computer. That is a lot safer than using your home Wi-Fi network, especially if you're in an urban area or close by other people. So proximity. So isolate yourself as much as you can. Limit sure. your exposure. Don't repeat your passwords. Yes. And when we're talking about uh, this device, any apps on here you don't recognize or, or even apps you're not using, get rid of them. And here yes. it is. It's not, you it's got a not unique password for everything, doctor. A unique <laughs> password for everything. And, and, and the what? unhackable. It ain't online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's, exactly it's right. funny because my, my aunt has one of those very old uh, phones, you know, that's not a smartphone. It makes calls. You remember those and uh she said everybody makes fun of me with this and i said don't let them make fun of you you got the most secure phone out there <laughs> so but but even apps that that you know a lot of young people meet each other today on tinder but tinder leaks a lot of information about you and so i if i get somebody to swipe on a profile that i create a fake profile i can get access to their privately marked Instagram account, I can get their Spotify playlist, I can get lots of personal information about that person. So there's the, those kinds of very popular apps uh, that are not developed abroad, maybe, but but we're using that can easily compromise our personal information. I bet there's a lot of middle aged guys that are all upset about what you just said about uh, about whatever that is Tinder. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but but we right. see, we well, that see was a things. great laugh. That was a great <laughs> laugh. I want to give everybody a bite at the apple, and then we're going to come back to Dr. Hayes to finish it up. Olivia, what did you learn today, you smart thing? You, I mean, pardon me, you very smart person. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> no words for you. Okay. Uh, no, this was amazing, Darren. Thank you so much. Um, I want to think more about 
physical infrastructure hacks and, and how that could be solved with real estate solutions and architecture solutions and kind of community building solutions. So you gave me a lot to think about there and I really appreciate it. And I lastly want to give a shout out to Reagan for just upping the music. It's been amazing today. Thank you. Look at you. You're the best. Thank you for being on the show. You can call me later with all the things I did wrong. Yes, thank um, you for having me. <laughs> Andreas, you were the victim. What did you learn? Well, um, I learned that you were a victim again. To Multiple start. times. <laughs> and, that we all, and basically that we all can be victims in one way or another. And just, again, to reaffirm, you know, taking a proactive stance on this, learning, talking, reaching out, and, and speaking to industry leaders, going to these conferences remotely. If it's a moving target, everything in our business, in Olivia's business, in your business, Jim. I think yeah. that the real thing that we learned is that we're never safe. We're never alone. We need to watch what we do all the time, even more. I used to say growing up that you need to be careful because whatever you do could end up on the front page in the newspaper. Now it's a lot worse. Yeah. Just ask the doctor for Mount Sinai. So um, that person lost their mind on, on the internet. It was a bad thing. So Dr. Hayes, what is the number one thing that you would recommend to people to protect themselves if they could only do one thing? Call him. Well, I mean, besides that. <laughs> uh, I, I would just say limit the amount of information that you have out there no matter what it is. So just to, just think about it. If somebody gained access to your email, um, what would be compromised? What information would be compromised? Do you have, you know, backups and pictures and could you recreate your computer if you needed to? You know, these are very expensive things. I get calls a lot with people saying, you know, my phone died. I What do I do? I didn't have any backup to that that information. Or my email was compromised. You know, think about if somebody was to take the, all those emails and put that information out online to the public. So take away your old information, delete it. Sensitive information that you no longer need that you may have shared with somebody once before and that, that cloud account, you know, remove that link, delete that information. So Data minimization is really the key message. It's amazing. It's so impossible to do that. I think that Olivia needs to come up with a program to scrub myself off the web. Olivia, you got a new a new thing to do there, or at least to keep them from coming into my building. I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. I want to thank everybody today. I want to thank my good friend, Andre Senny, for setting us up with Dr. Hayes again. Dr. Hayes, great to see you as always. I'm going to thank Olivia for tolerating me. I know I'm a, a mastodon, but I'm doing the best I can. And um, I want to thank Reagan for making the show so great. Of course, I want to thank our sponsors. I want to thank Warren Henry Automotive, Creco AI, Carlson Integrated, Turkel Brands, Deep Blocks. I can say that right. All right. The Bergstrom Center for Real Estate Studies, and of course, Warren Henry Automotive. Thank you to you, my listener. Without you, we wouldn't have a show. Go to our Facebook page, like our show, tell your friends, Instagram, LinkedIn, the whole bit. I'm everywhere. Somebody actually called and said, how'd you broadcast on Clubhouse, I said, I didn't do it. Reagan Mendoza did. So thank you to Reagan Mendoza, too. We never give thanks to Reagan Mendoza, but Olivia did. Remember, we're on uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Clubhouse, Twitch, Twitter. I don't know. Oh, I forgot something. LinkedIn, did I say that? Anyway, if you missed today's show, it'll be up on LinkedIn immediately, and it'll be up on freedombusiness.com shortly. This is Jim Freed for Freedom Business. Look on, look for us on on. Oh, I almost said the old thing. Look for us right here on all the different social channels next Wednesday at noon. I started reading the thing and it's old. So we'll be on next week. I'm not really sure who we're going to have. Yes, I am. You know we're going to have Manny Johnson on again. We're going to talk about all the things I'm learning with Manny Johnson. Why? Because I love doing this. Remember, the person wants to do something, finds a way, the other finds an excuse. Now go out there and make it happen. God bless you. God bless America. Reagan, yours. 